Well, all right, you're watching Wired Up Retro, episode 22. And my friends, today I'll be showing you how to get PlayStation 3 controllers working wirelessly on the Nintendo GameCube. And as a sequel episode to last month's video, we're also going to be delving into getting Flight Yoke Arcade Control for playing Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3. And that's this game right here. And you're going to be utilizing an accessory to get that flight yoke control. This is called the Appfinity App Drive, which is basically uh, for cell phone use. I covered this in our last episode if you want to know a little bit of the history about it. But uh, the, this makes a very nice, high quality flight yoke when utilized with the DualShock or DualShock 4, uh, DualShock 3 or DualShock 4 controllers to provide really nice six axis motion control that's quite close to the flight yoke you'd find in the 1983 sit down ca cabinet of Star Wars the arcade game. And that exact game actually is included in Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3. And so, as you can see on the screen here, I've got a uh, little Darth Vader getting ready to approach three arcade cabinets, one of which is uh, the very first Star Wars game, where you got the space battle and the trench run on the Death Star. And you know what? That, that really does need to be experienced with a flight yoke, as it adds to the accuracy of the pinpoint shooting that you're going to need to see the later levels and knock down as many TIE fighters as possible. Also, on this disc is um, the second arcade game, Empire Strikes Back. We're going to show you a little footage of that one here today. It's also a vector graphics game like the first one. And uh, they're 3D vector graphics. They're actually pretty cool. And now the third game, which is Return of the Jedi, is more of a raster graphics game. Maybe um, not so much 3D. It's kind of a three-quarters perspective shooter type game. Uh, probably not going to be showing that one. We're kind of interested more in the first two games and especially Empire Strikes Back today. We showed uh, the original one on the last episode, so do, do be sure to check that out. Now in the description below, you're going to find details on entering the codes in this game, so be sure to check that out. Um, you can't just enter the game and this is there. You're going to have to enter codes. All right, so I guess what, what I'll do initially here is just show you a little bit about how I set this up so that it would work um, with these flight yoke DualShock 3 and 4 controllers on the GameCube. Firstly, you're going to need a game controller super converter and this is made by the company Brook. And this particular adapter enables a uh, PlayStation 3 or 4 controller to be converted to PlayStation 2. And I have that um, right over here. So yeah, you, you basically have to uh, get it configured initially by uh, uh, plugging your DualShock 4 or your DualShock 3 into it and then once you've done that and got it configured it will now start to accept a wireless signal from either of those controllers. Um, so you've got it set in PS, um, yeah, PS3 mode or PS, actually it's PS2 mode and once you've done that you're going to want to connect it to a GameCube using what's called the Game Elements PlayStation 2 to GameCube controller adapter. And it's also got an Xbox uh, connector as well. You're not going to be using that. And so you're going to plug in the Brook adapter into that. And once you've got everything all configured, this light is going to light up. You're going to press a button on one of these two controllers, whichever one you've configured to work with this. And everything's going to be up and running wirelessly. Now, if you are directly connecting, you're only going to be able to use a DualShock 4 or DualShock 3 left thumbstick to play the game, which is kind of fine. You know, there's plenty of GameCube games that, you know, uh, use the left thumbstick and even the right thumbstick is going to be compatible. Now, if you want to use six axis controls, which we're wanting to do, you have to go a step further, and that is to buy a uh, controller adapter uh, that's called the Cronus Max Plus and then configure the software. The software is called Cronus Max Pro version 1.20 is the one I have. There might be later versions that are even better, but I'm using version 1.20 and it's working just fine. But anyway, the Cronus Max Plus can be then configured uh, with a special script. They call these GPS scripts. Um, these scripts enable the uh, internal 
six axis motion control to be activated. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how to activate that and we'll see uh, you know, how we can get this up and running here pretty quick. All right, so what we have up on the screen here is the controller guide for connecting a PlayStation 3 DualShock 3 controller to a PS3. And I will just go through this very briefly. It's in the manual, so you can always go online and um, find out you know, how to do this. If something here is missed, um, you, know, you can always check it again. Um, another thing, you're gonna need a Bluetooth connect, wireless connector. Um, I bought this Asus USB BT400 USB adapter, Bluetooth 4.0. This is a pretty fast adapter. Um, I got it on sale. I think I got it for like 15 or 12 or something like that. So yeah, once you're in this, I'm um, just gonna go through the instructions briefly. So you're gonna first set your output protocol for your Cronus Max Plus. And what you first do is you connect the program port to a mini USB, not micro, but mini USB. And then you're gonna just plug it into the side of your laptop. This symbol indicates we're in standby mode for the device to have a controller plugged into it. And we'll just read through the instructions here. Once you've gone to the options, this is under tools, options, device, you want to set the output protocol to PS3. And then you want to check mark the boxes as shown here. And I won't, you know, just, just follow the instructions here. You want uh, in frame out, you want IMS response check marks, but these two you don't check mark, that one you don't. You also want it set at full speed, especially if you're using a Bluetooth 4.0. All right, so set, once you've set that, then you can, uh, you know, activate it or close it out and use the speed up settings when using the DualShock 3 controller with USB 4.0 USB adapter as or are as above. So, you know, definitely follow those instructions there. Then you pair your DualShock 3 controller with your Cronus Max Plus and you want to click on under tools DualShock 3 slash six axis pairing and then you want to connect your Bluetooth USB adapter to the Cronus Max Plus. That would be this adapter goes into here. And once that's in there, it says here, I, okay, step one, um, you're gonna go to this pairing wizard for the DualShock 3 six axis. It says, discover the BD address, connect your compatible Bluetooth dongle to the device's input port. And then um, you click next and you go to connect your DualShock 3 controller to the Cronus Plant Max Plus. So once you're in that part of the wizard, uh, you're gonna have your DualShock 3 all ready to go with its USB connector. It says remove the Bluetooth dongle and connect your DualShock 3 six axis controller using a USB cable. So at that point, you just take your PlayStation 3 controller and connect it. And then you click next to complete the pairing. Okay. And the pairing will then complete. And you go to, uh, it says successfully paired. You're gonna wanna remove the USB cable from here. And then you're going to um, turn off your DualShock 3 controller. It might just turn off, you know, quickly. And, or if it doesn't, you hold the center button down the PS button for 30 seconds, it'll turn off. And then re reconnect the Bluetooth dongle to this again. And once you've done that, you press the PS button on your controller and it is automatically uh, configured. And you can see I've already done this once before. I've actually uh, got a single light on my PlayStation 3 controller and it says zero, which means we're connected to this uh, wireless Bluetooth dongle. All right. So then uh, disconnect the DualShock 3 controller from your Cronus Max Plus, and you can then uh, connect it to your PS3. In this case, well, not the uh, PlayStation 3, but the GameCube, and you're gonna use that Game Elements adapter connected to the Brook uh, controller adapter. You take your Cronus Max, plug that in, then you plug in your little Bluetooth dongle. It'll show a zero once you've got this and you press the button, it'll show the zero on the screen. 
And notice now it doesn't say zero, it says one. Well, the reason it says one is because I pressed that button and there's a script in there in the firmware that's basically putting this controller into six axis mode, okay? And six axis mode lets me move it around like I would like a Wii remote, okay? And we go up to whatever game we wanna play and we press the button and you can play the game like this. All right, so this is the online library for Cronus Mix or Cronus Pro version 1.20. And the library has to do with GPC scripts. I think I called it GPS before. It's GPC <laughs> scripts. And so, yeah, you just want to go over to PlayStation 3. And then you could even do, um, you know, scroll around and search for the what's called a reverse six axis script. Okay. So once you have found that, um, and there's different categories of scripts, um, you then click the download, okay? And it'll show up in visual scripting, which I've clicked right here, okay? And it'll show a little program that is run. And there's also a GPC compiler right here. And the programmer. Okay, so in my Cronus Max Plus, there's a reverse six axis GPC, and I had found it in my GPC files, and then I actually um, dragged and dropped that over here, and that's how I got it up there. The reverse six axis enables your uh, left thumbstick action to be applied to the, uh, the six axis function. All right, and so there you go. All right, so I'll show you how to put the wheel together. Well, all right, in our last video, I showed you where to make the saw cuts in the AppFinny AppDrive wheel. And those cuts were made here, 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 and here, okay? And I'm showing you just a little bit of the footage. Now, I also uh, ask that you make a drill hole in the Appfinity app drive. And that is to get the, feed this screw through. By the way, this screw is a machine screw. It's a 10 24 by one and a quarter inch uh, round top uh, machine screw. I think that's made out of a zinc um, finish or zinc uh, material. It also comes with the little um, nuts. All right, so you want to affix or get that through the hole you drilled with your drill and affix the uh, nuts, okay? On this side, you're not having to drill any holes. This already had little grooves. They're, they're uh, horizontal little openings and if that screw will fit in there just perfectly and you can slide it left or right and adjust it and then once you've got your uh, nuts in there it's ready all right and then you also want to make a purchase of these are called well nuts uh, again designed for 10-24 size okay and a well nut is basically got a uh, screw um, feeder in there and it goes all the way through. So this is basically pretty soft rubber, but it's metal on the inside. So you're gonna wanna screw that in. And it can go, you can go too far with it. Too far would be, you know, like that, where you're getting the metal coming through. You don't want that. So you're wanting it somewhere there. And of course, do the same with these. So to get this in there, we're going to turn it around and you're going to get the controller slid in in between the well nuts and screws basically. Now if you flip it over, you can see these thumb sticks can still be moved around, but if you go too far, they won't be movable um, properly. So you got to bring it forward enough uh, to get the thumb sticks to move freely. Okay. So now we're going to work on unscrewing the well nuts a little from the 
uh, screws get it tightened down that way. It's actually pretty tight that way. This one needs to go a little further. You may need to actually get these nuts tightened down a little bit. Anyway, you get the idea. And once you got it in there, um, it's going to be held pretty tightly. Need some, you need to finagle with this a little bit. Okay, so once you've got it in there pretty well and it's held well, then you're going to be hitting that X button to play your game and you're going to be able to use it. All right, so let's get it over there and we'll try playing the game. All right, so here we are getting ready to put it into six axis mode. Here we go. Oh, don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. 